Yeah, guys, we're at the new Dark Arts building. Justin Turnis invited us to come down, check good it out. Good to see you, Noel. Hey, we're gonna talk about some stuff, interview him, get to some nuts and bolts of what's going on here. This new building's sick. You guys are gonna be stoked. Okay, this is the machine room. This is where it all kind of starts. This is the new Dino D APS. As a structure, it's a little more robust than their earlier models. And put a blank on the machine and, and, and cut that board out. And that's basically the beginning. Um, and then it obviously goes to shaping after that. This is Tyler and this is uh, laminating, the dark arts. Kind of a traditional layup method in a sense and then we add vacuum to it afterwards. This is the hot coat room in here. Uh, we also set fins in here so our guy Colin, he's doing a mix. There's some deck hot coats going on some fins happening. Um, every room has like a climate control and epoxy climate's pretty important. So we have two shaping rooms. You know, I, I jump in one every now and then. Uh, we have a guy, Alex, who's a really great shaper. When I was 19 in a, sh in a factory, my excitement was making my own boards, you know? And I thought the coolest thing was the shapers would let you use a template and, and let you use the planer in the shaping room and you could go in there and just make a propeller, you know what I mean? And then you'd ride it and you're like, this thing's amazing, you know, and it just looks terrible, but that's half the fun, right? right. You gotta make, you gotta have fun. My first question for you is, what made you start Dark Arts? I've had a journey making boards since I was about 19 or 20. You know, I actually stopped making surfboards at one point. And I think at that moment I got a real good clarity of just an outsider's look at the industry and what I was capable of and my interests. Mm -hmm. And that was always a high performance, out of the box thinking, you know, uh, different materials kind of build. And I kind of saw a lane for a carbon fiber surfboard. I mean, people have done it, tried to do it, um, in the past, but I thought that I, I feel like my skill set and background, I could actually do it. Mm -hmm. And I know that the industry, you know, has been looking for something like this. Yeah. With this space to think just out at my house, it's got two acres out in Hamul. I mean, it was a real chance for me to just like have this peace and quiet mm. and just really get into the nuts and bolts of sure. what this surfboard is, mm -hmm. you know? And as it gained momentum, just working with local shapers and surfers, mm -hmm. um, I realized that it needed a brand name and it could be bigger than what I was just doing at my house. Sure. Congratulations for the new building and Thank the you. win with Philippe yeah. winning on a carbon board, which, yeah. you know, that's a whole nother conversation we'll get into, but yeah. I, I really feel like the formulation that you have to making this high performance tech yeah is uh, special right yeah i've learned a lot with epoxy where it's not really a slop and mop kind of layup mm. um the modulus of epoxy is just totally different than poly mm. and how you utilize that is is way different you know you don't need as much epoxy as you would polyester in a board build. You know, mm -hmm. you can pull way back on that. And how we make our boards is with that thinking in mind is mm -hmm. less, and, less is more, you mm -hmm. know? And when you utilize carbon with that kind of thinking, it's kind of a really like de-built board in a sense, mm -hmm. you know, um, where you're just, the, the end desire is to just ride that carbon, you know, right. and that core and not have a lot of extra on top, right? you know? What I've kind of focused on in this thing is, you know, let's utilize traditional board building methods, mm -hmm. but bring in vacuum bagging, carbon fiber, epoxy, and let's see how we can utilize those instruments along with the traditional methods mm -hmm. to bring this best carbon fiber surfboard possible. I can speak for yeah. myself, right in your guys' um, construction, there's more pop, there's more projection, the board's loading, it's accelerating out of turns at such a high speed that it you're almost adjusting at first until you get used to it a little bit. Yeah. So comparing the dark arts from a personal opinion, it's explosive compared to a typical PU poly or EPS epoxy. 
Yeah. Now, I've got other boards coming that I have to review. Yeah. That are gonna be carbon. Yeah. And one of the questions that I'm gonna have hit me hard is, what's gonna separate the dark arts from the other constructions that might be coming out in carbon? They all look black. Yeah. So us surfers, we just think, oh, it's the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's funny. I call all the black boards in the market of dark arts. <laughs> <laughs> So the difference I would say, the main difference is, you know, we just use carbon fiber um, and it's just carbon fiber vacuum bagged on EPS. Mm -hmm. We focus solely on performance sure. um, and that performance is just carbon, you know. Right. Other companies, other brands might add fiberglass over the top. In my opinion, you know, that changes the board completely. It changes the structure. You're, that's, you're technically laying up the board twice. You know, right, you're gonna right. vacuum bag it and then you're gonna lay it up again. Um, whenever you add a layer, uh, it creates a different feel. Right. And I'm lucky that I get to work with some of the top guys in the world. And what I've learned from them is the minuscule amounts of adding anything make a world of difference. But uh, what we do is, is focus on just that performance vacuum bag carbon. Now you kind of scratched the surface a little bit about what the best surfers in the world are riding, Philippe's uh, model that he was riding at lowers, John John's and making boards with them and them giving you feedback. Yeah. This board right here, I think you said is going to um, sharp eye and it looks like a stock dark arts board. Correct, yeah. And is this, the same exact carbon and construction that Philippe was riding? Yeah, for Philippe, he's been riding our, our just stock build that you can get, you know, available here. And I'm proud of that because that board that he rode actually went through our production and it's built the same way we build all of our boards. So it really proved on the main stage, like the guys that we have here that we work with every day, you know, they put their heart and souls into coming in here and doing mm -hmm. their best. Um, that's a proven thing and that was really cool. Right. John John, he's really fun to work with. Um, I actually use a completely different carbon with him. Mm -hmm. And you know, I feel like the design and the shape of the board really matters mm -hmm. along with the material. So dialing in John John, he uses a 30 degree carbon it's a non-woven carbon and he seems to really love that mm -hmm. he said that you know at times it's the best board he's ever ridden right but that board it's condition specific mm. um, i'm constantly working with him on other stuff sure. and it makes it exciting for me you know so yeah it's it's a whole different animal materials you know right uh, non-wovens versus wovens and and how you blend those and and all that but the exciting thing for me is you know the carbon we use, the production method we use, it's world title proven and it works. The other question I have is who were you making boards for before yeah. you became Dark Arts? Maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we work with Pizel, Album, Sharp Eye, and then uh, IPA. Mm -hmm. And then I have my own brand, JT. Yep. Um, Prior to Dark Arts, you know, I've always built boards with friends. Uh, Dan Mann, who works with, you know, a, a pretty well-known brand. Sure. And uh, a guy, Stu Kensian, who's been a big um, figure in my board building career. Mm -hmm. Other guys, just local shapers, Hank Warner and, and guys like that. Um, Chris Christensen, mm -hmm. um, just a bunch of friends, you know, who've, who've believed in me and given me a chance and, and all that. I mean, those guys are, those guys are awesome. Without those guys, um, you know, I wouldn't be where I'm at. That's sure. awesome. Now working with the different board brands, I mean, Sharp Eye, we've talked about Philippe and John John, yeah. making boards for these bigger brands. What's that been like for you? It's been a learning experience, man, for sure. You know, um, that tour is, it's, it's a competitive machine mm. and, and those brands, that's, they take it very serious, you know, sure. and their surfers are, are everything to their brand. Yep. And I think their surfers reached out and, and wanted to try carbon boards. Mm -hmm. And 
it's it's just been a, a real treat for me to be a part of you know watching them be successful on it what they're feeling and changing the boards and right. all these events like it's super stressful for me to watch them ride these things you right. know like it's a it's an event and it comes up on the screen and i'm like i i gotta walk away you know what i mean because <laughs> i feel like I'm, if something goes wrong it's my fault you know right, right. but yeah Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode here at the new Dark Arts headquarters. Justin, thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thank you, Noel. Joining Appreciate us on the show. It. I've yeah. got a new JT, yeah. high performance shortboard model. I'm looking yeah. forward to getting on. Yeah, let me know what we can adjust and change and we'll chase some fun things for sure. That'd be epic. Well yeah. guys, if you like the show, give us a thumbs up. Ring the bell so you don't miss an episode. Until next time, we'll see you in the water. Bye-bye.